We are well into the season of Epiphany. Epiphany, a great idea, an understanding, a a smack up the side of the head that says, of course, it's been there all along. Why didn't I see it? Season of Epiphany. God's being revealed to us, God's glory being revealed in the person of Jesus Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. Now, the season of Epiphany does begin on the feast, the 6th of January, with the three sages, the wise ones coming from the east. But I would suggest to you that we have been talking about Epiphany in one way or another, at least since Advent, at least since before Christmas. I've heard readings telling about the coming of the one who is to save us. And in that last Sunday before Christmas, there was the Epiphany of John the Baptist turning a somersault in his mother's womb when he greeted Mary, who brought news that she was to bear the Savior, a revealing and understanding of God's glory in the world. Of course, another epiphany came on that Christmas night when shepherds, directed by the angel choirs of heaven to go to that barn in Bethlehem and to see the one who was born, the Savior of the world. There, another epiphany, another instance of God, the glory of God being revealed to common, ordinary folk. Then, of course, there was the epiphany, the capital E epiphany that we heard about a couple of Sundays ago with the wise ones coming from the east being directed again to find the Christ, to find the new king. The glory of God being expanded really to all the world then as these wise ones made their way back to their home country by a different road. Last Sunday we celebrated the baptism of Jesus, another epiphany, another revealing of God's glory at the River Jordan after Jesus was baptized and the heavens opened. In sound, the voice of the Father said, You are my Son. My beloved, on you, my favor rests with you. I am well pleased. Another epiphany, a revealing of God's glory. Today we have another instance of an epiphany, a revealing of God's glory. This one comes from St. John's Gospel. This story appears only there. The story of the wedding feast at Cana, Jesus' first Miracle, first sign, John tells us. Another chance for God's glory to be revealed to ordinary people. Scholars have talked about the wedding feast at Cana and what its significance might be. There's all sorts of things to unpack in this. Jesus' dialogue with his mother, the Son of God, having a conversation and at first putting her off, but then she has confidence and says, do whatever he tells you to do, even though he told her, my time has not yet come. Some little bit of family conflict there. Interesting. And of course, there's the question of the water becoming wine and the steward being puzzled that the bride and groom, that the wedding couple would serve the good wine at the end. Normally the good wine is served first, right? And there's the question of, is Jesus perhaps that new wine? After the world had been drunk on all sorts of sin, on all sorts of losing our way, was it finally time for Jesus, the new wine, to intoxicate us, to fill us? Maybe. That's a great theme to explore as well. But this morning I want to be a little simpler than that. Did you notice the context in which this epiphany took place? In the middle of a celebration, in the middle of a party, People having a good time. Family and friends gathered together to celebrate the love shared by two people. In the middle of all of this is where God chooses to reveal himself in the person of Jesus. And this miracle of turning water into wine. 
Now, to be sure, most of Jesus' miracles deal with people who are hurting, who are hopeless, who are hungry, who are grieving, who are struggling. The gospel stories are full of Jesus finding himself in the middle of human misery and naming it and claiming the power of God that that really is contained within each of us to, to try to see the blessing and the good. To be sure, ours is a God who suffers for us. Ours is a God who became incarnate to understand and explore the fullness of humanity, including even death on the cross. Ours is a God who knows intimately human suffering, And so often, that's what we dwell on, and that is important because that is something that is unique to Christianity. Ours is a God who suffers and dies and is risen for us. But what we often lose sight of, at least I do, maybe you do as well, is that God is also found in the midst of celebration. God is found in the midst of grace and glory and a good time. And what better day to have this reading of the wedding feast of Cana than on the day of our annual meeting when we gather to celebrate the richness of the diversity of this congregation and the richness of the ways that God has entrusted us to do good works in this community. God is present, is manifest with us in the midst of celebration today. And that's a gift and a grace and a good thing. The challenge for us, I think, the challenge for me anyway, perhaps it is for you, is in our day-to-day lives to see God in the goodness of life. That's not always our first impulse when things go right. Maybe it is for you, but it's not always my first impulse. The first impulse when things are lousy very often is to break our hearts open in prayer to God. God, help me get through this mess. Help me get through this bad news. Help me get through this hardship. How many times have you prayed that prayer for yourself? How many times have you prayed that for someone else when someone has told you of a hardship, some bad news that they're going through? We instantly say, I will pray for you in the midst of your hardship and heartache, right? We do that, and that's a good thing. But I don't think we have the same instinct, at least I don't always, to have that same sense of seeing the divine in the midst of celebration and goodness. I suspect that you might struggle with that too. I think the church does in general. Have you ever noticed, either at the prayers of the people or any other time when we offer a chance for people to offer prayer intentions aloud, just listen, more often than not, the hardships and the heartaches outnumber the blessings and the thanksgivings by a significant quantity. You're very quick to ask God's help and healing and wholeness on that which is struggling, but we have a harder time reaching out in thanksgiving for the blessings and the things that are good. Now, I suspect God, being a loving God, doesn't hold that against us, doesn't chasten us for missing God in the midst of celebration. But that is our challenge. That is our reminder today with this wedding feast of Cana, this miracle, this revealing of God, is to remember that in the midst of celebration, in the midst of joy, our God is there too, fully celebrating, rejoicing, embracing us, and, and making sure that the party keeps going even when we think we've run out of wine and the good times has run its course. With God, our good times never run their course. Jesus answered that as much on the cross and being raised from the tomb. Good times, life never runs its course. With God, there is always life, there is always goodness, always grace. And when we gather together as God's people to bear one another's burdens, yes, to share one another's sorrows, of course. But God is also with us when we rejoice in good news, the birth of a child, the successful completion of exams and tests and certifications. 
New jobs, good news, healing, wholeness, hope, and health. God is in the midst of this and wishes to be revealed in the midst of this too. May I have the instinct and the impulse, and may you if you need it, to remember in the middle of our lives, which on balance most of the time are pretty good. We got up this morning, did we not? We're gathered here in this place, aren't we? We're not listening to our magnificent organ this morning because there is a cipher. There's something coming out of one of those trumpets up there because it's on an outside wall and it's impossibly cold this morning and the organ is squeaking. But thanks be to God that we have a piano over here and a young man who can play both the organ and the piano so we don't have to sing unaccompanied. That is a grace and a goodness. It was freezing awful cold this morning. I got here at 5.30 this morning to shovel the walks. And I had a beautiful full moon to keep me company. And I've been blessed with relatively strong arms and a strong back. And I got over whatever kind of cold and funk was happening with me this last week. There's so much to be thankful for. And this wedding feast at Cana reminds us that as much as God is in the misery and the mess, God is also to be found in goodness and celebration. So, know that God is with us right now as we celebrate this Eucharist. Know that God will be with us in the parish hall as we celebrate our annual meeting. And know that God is with you wherever you go. And when things are going well, remember to stop and to give thanks for the one who makes miracles every day. Amen.